we just basically had a bed and a refrigerator in here and I moved in I just started whacking it away just building it and uh, a lot of fabrication to get it to what I wanted you know I just I took a long time because you know I wanted to make sure I did it right and did it to my liking what's going on guys welcome back to the channel so as you guys know we do live full-time in a sprinter van we live in the smaller sprinter van the 144 and we've been looking at new vans new RVs maybe even school buses and we were on a ride just the other day and we saw this parked on the street and there was an Instagram handle on the back. So we contacted them for a tour and it's just too sick not to show you guys. So today we're gonna give you a little bit of a tour of this awesome school bus. Hey, my name is Kyle, I'm 25. This is my pup Soap, and we live in this school bus with my girlfriend, she's currently doing schoolwork. And um, this is a 1998 Detroit International. I bought it in Texas from a uh, public school district, Higgins, Texas, um, and I drove it back to Michigan. It was a fully functional school bus at the time, and I retrofitted it into a RV, full-time RV. The first thing I did, I ripped off all the seats, and I raised the roof eight inches. Um, so I completely cut the roof off, and I added this paneling, 16 gauge, uh, galvanized steel paneling, uh, all the rivets and everything was hand done by me. Uh, the only thing that we subcontracted out was uh, spray foam. And uh, the hardest part of the lift was the cone. Um, that's all steel as well. And then uh, the next thing that we did was we painted the bus. And uh, that took about two weeks of prepping, hand sanding, uh, did a uh, epoxy primer and then the two-tone. We ended up swapping out the tires to 11R because they were, they discontinued the size, they were 9Rs. So we went up to a BF Goodrich cross control, which is basically, this This tire is like the largest tire on the market it's, uh, it's for logging trucks. So we're, we intended when we started building the bus, uh, we intended for mountain use, um, I did a year of ski instructing out in Beaver Creek, Colorado, so I wanted something I could live in a parking lot um, during the winter without any hookups and uh, being able to go through all that Arthur passes and, and uh, snow. And um, so in the back here we've got, this is our logo, or Big Betty, I named it after my great grandma. So Bummy with Big Betty, we're ski, surf bums, and uh, Right in here, this is kind of a mess, but this is our like garage. So we've got um, two 100 gallon water tanks that are right here. We've got our battle born batteries. They're all kind of smushed back in there. Um, just, you know, tools, a lot of, lot of stuff we probably don't need. <laughs> Gallons are hidden in here? Yeah, so these, these are two tanks. Right oh, here. Wow. Yeah. This is a, uh, I built it myself. It's just a one by two steel tubing, all hand weld. Uh, my grandfather, who was uh, a huge help in a lot of this, he had a, a welder on hand and he helped me. This was one of the probably the trickiest parts after I built the whole um, deck up here. So one of the trickiest parts was kind of getting this level. I wanted to make sure that it had enough space you know to get up and you're not gonna bump the bus so up top we've got so we've got this is a seven by ten foot deck uh the it's it's all steel construction and then this is cedar i just have to refinish it we you know we kind of experimented here and there with some stuff we we really should have stained it but um and then we have a thousand watts of solar up top just Amazon buy. I think they were like $120 a panel. Um, and I couldn't find anything that was to my liking as far as hardware to fasten it to the bus. Because I, I just heard all these bad stories of people losing their panels when they're driving down the freeway. So I ended up using a construction of um, gas line. So I, I used gas piping and I, I drilled it to the frame of the bus, the hat channels of the bus, and I gave it that kind of, you, you could walk, I mean, we could have made the deck out of that material, it's very robust. We've got our little chimney here for a wood stove, that's, um, 
those guys out in Idaho, uh, tinywoodstove.com. Uh, they make an awesome product, a dwarf stove. We've got the 4K, um, cranks out some crazy heat. I just kind of hand fabricated this just out of uh, stainless steel piping, just kind of bent it all up. It's actually from like uh, hydraulic piping for like big rigs and stuff. Uh, so that's kind of our surfboard rack. Just a little lock system here, and then we've got actually high volt um, up here, just in case you wanted to like chill up here, you know, uh, bring your laptop, you know, have a cup of coffee. So these are all these these lights are from Costco. We just kind of threw them up here. It makes a nice ambiance. Um, and then we could I could show you down below. Shoot, we have to get down. Yeah, so I'll just <laughs> I'll get halfway and then. Hi, I'll pass it maybe. <laughs> Our 30 amp inlet there, that's for if we want to charge up the batteries. Um, we haven't used it. I want to say we use it, you know, a few times in Michigan when, you know, it's really overcast, cloudy, you know, for like a week on end. But generally we can be off grid full time right now with our setup. Mud flaps, everything was just hand cut, uh, hand done. We've got 100 gallon gray water tank. Um, and that's just for, you know, our shower and our kitchen um, use. We've got two sinks in, inside. Um, and then all these windows right here um, are just off of eBay. Uh, this is um, double paying. Uh, it's it's an insulated window. So basically the same kind of window you would have on your house. So that really helps um, with uh, climate control on the inside. Um, we replaced all the windows, even even the driver window with these uh, RV style windows. Um, yeah, it's a it's a 7.3 liter turbo um, diesel, uh, Allison Trans, super reliable. You're not going to go any faster than 55, 60. Uh, you know, taking it slow through the mountains for sure. Um, and once we get into here, we really kind of clean this up this was a big mess because we actually have about five inches of sub flooring um, radiant tubing in the floor uh, four inches of insulation rigid foam underneath and we just cleaned it up with this hardwood uh, so yeah this is a tobacco akasha hardwood floor it's it's pretty good pretty durable you know weather resistant tropical wood and then this is all cedar from I've got some friends in Michigan that are Finnish and they remodel, you know, saunas. So this is all old sauna wood. I, I want to say like it was like from a sauna from like 30 years ago. So we uh, hand planed every piece down. Took me probably 10 hours to do, honestly. And then, um, so we've got the kitchen right here. Um, we've got my full size refrigerator. This is just Samsung. Uh, from Home Depot, you know, like it's a four hundred dollar refrigerator. We got In and Out <laughs> shakes in there, chilling in there. Uh, so I kind of, you know, I built the bus. Um, so that's an actual fridge. This or, is a fridge. That's not this like is a, a one twenty. No, this is oh. a full. <laughs> this is a full fridge, bro. Yeah. That's awesome. I mean, we we love our smoothies. We love, you know, we wanted to have like frozen fruit. That was kind of. It was not so much about the fridge, it was about, you know, having all that fresh fruit. We used uh, these safety child lock um, devices to lock your fridge in place um, when we're driving down the road. This is our just Dometic RV uh, stove oven. Oh, you have an oven? Yep, and uh, three burner, nine BTU. Uh, so we've got these two, that was one of the very hardest things I have to say about this build was we've got this 100 pound propane tank that we put mounted fixed permanently underneath the, the bottom of the bus and uh, we ran this gas line iron gas line that goes underneath the bus um, and then there one shoots up right here one shoots up right here and we've got two valves so we've got actually uh, you know hot water heater this is kind of messy but we've got a hot water heater that was like a temporary situation because once we get our uh, radiant flooring all set up our hot water is actually going to come from diesel um, and uh, so, <laughs> uh, all yeah all the construction of our uh, kitchen is ply um, 
everything was just hand just built. I got these AccuRide drawer slides for everything. Uh, they're they're used in like fire trucks and ambulances and stuff like that. So they're rated like for 150 pounds. And you got it's just it's kind of gets messy after you go down there. Tech drawer. We got pots and pans over there, um, and then we've got you know recycling bin, garbage bin, right there. Um, butcher block, teak countertop. Uh, this is the wood stove. I mentioned before, this is dwarf. These guys are sweet. You get like a little fan that spins normally <laughs> when it's hot. And uh, so how hard was it installing the wood stove? Uh, it wasn't too bad. You know, there's, there's a few things you really do want to pay attention to all your guidelines. Um, because you, I've just seen some nasty uh, installs and it can be super dangerous, you know? So that was our key element was safety, right? Like we wanted to be safe in this space. Um, took all the precautions, just make sure you got your distancing. This is a, a heat guard, um, or some would say, uh, you know, just, uh, yeah, a heat guard, I guess. And um, that's just, you know, we picked, a lot of this stuff is actually reclaimed. Like I said, like the, the ceiling, this is all pallet wood. Um, this is from a barn and I just kind of made a design into it. And you did um, it all yourself. Yeah, all myself, uh, you, you know, everything like this. This is all just, uh, this is pine that I burned. It's a Shushai band method, an old Japanese method. Same with this, this is a cedar door. Opens up and you got your, your shower. Um, it's still wet from this morning from washing off. We got our wetsuit in there and composting toilet that's Whoa, airhead. the shower is huge, dude. Yeah, you didn't see this? <laughs> oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, what are we doing? <laughs> yeah. Anna, come check out the shower. <laughs> this thing is so yeah, awesome. Yeah, dude, yeah. This is, I mean, you could do this. And you could do this on a van. Uh, this is Airhead. Dude, these are the best toilets. Uh, do not get Nature's Head, I'm telling you. I shouldn't say that. No haters. Uh, this is uh, Airhead all the way. This is what they use in yachts. Um, so uh, for two people, it'll last a month, you know, for the compost side. And then the urine side, there's, it's divided. Uh, you know, about two days, you gotta, you know, just take it out and you can walk it straight into like a Starbucks and empty it in a restroom like no one knows. And how'd you do the um, sink? The sink was just out of a, uh, just a slab of wood and I cut it and this is actually my girlfriend's mom's taco bowl. <laughs> and I just drilled a hole through and I'm like, all right, we're gonna make, cause it's all about space, right? Concern space, we couldn't find uh, a small enough sink that we wanted. So everything is PEX in the bus um, up until this point right here because we couldn't figure out a way to run the, co the lines in the wall through here for the shower. So I just wanted it to be exposed, not so much just for the looks. So we ended up just doing copper because it's not gonna freeze. That's the one thing you gotta worry about is like lines freezing in the winter. So for here, we wanted to try to find a place for everything. Um, so I've got a speaker, just in-house speaker, Marshall, and then we've got our Vitamix that just kind of stays right here. This is on, don't even really need to use that. It just pretty much stays put when we're driving and we just kind of just flick it on, take it over to the kitchen and put your ingredients in and boom, you got a smoothie, you got soup, you got bread. Uh, this is all closet space, it's kind of messy. I don't know if you want to show it. This is kind of, <laughs> do you want to show it? I don't care, we kind of just, packed it in um, and then we've got so for Sophie we've got a little dog right so we've got a little feeding trough right here that we just leave full time it never has spilled once even like filling it all the way up it's just it's one of those things it's just we never have issues with and um, we built this little she loves like her safe spots She's a very adventurous dog, but when we have company over and stuff, she likes to escape, and this is where she sleeps most of the time. And we've got this um, couch that's, we just kind of have this cover on it, but all the vinyl work I did, I re-vinyled, re-upholstered the front seat. Um, so this actually folds out into a queen, pulls out, um, I can show you underneath, and it's also acts as storage. Um, really love this and you know we've got usb ports everywhere you know 120 so if you're sitting by the, the couch and you want to charge your phone or laptop 
You can do that. And so you said storage. How do you put stuff in there? So you just, oh, you just, uh, I mean, it's kind of funky to do it, but oh, wow. we got to, we got to lift, we got to like, take, oh, yeah, no, no worries. take this it, off. It comes up there. Uh, <laughs> I figured you'd enter that part. Um, yeah, so that pulls out and, uh, you know, once we, we've got these, uh, curtains and once we put those curtains up, you know, just put them on, it's like you can step outside and you can't see inside. So it's like kind of our own oasis, even like being in the city. It's just even with the windows, we've got a pull out table for we're ready to eat. This is just the butcher block. I got at lumber liquidators as part of the uh, kitchen. So I just chopped in half as an eight footer. That's where so we got ours. Is, is it? Yeah. yeah. Deal. <laughs> Black, Black Friday deals, man. I'm telling you, you got to act fast. So we just AccuRide. It's rated for 600 pounds. You could sit on it if you wanted to. And then um, this is my girl. This is my side, or this is my side, my girlfriend's side. And then we share the bottom drawer. So they just pull out. I'll just show you that real quick. They're deep drawers, 36 inches uh, back in. Um, and again, they're just they're just hefty, way too hefty, way too over engineered. This is our bed area. It's kind of funky. We got TV right there. Um, my girlfriend loves her pillows, so we've got like probably six or seven different pillows. And then, uh, you know, I had this window back here, so we opened that, we want some fresh air, you know? But, uh, so I, I wanted to have something I could lean against without laying on the window. So oh, I hey, just, um, I made this kind of like copper, like, you know, uh, bed backing. And uh, so we've got fire hydrant, um, a smoke alarm, carbon monoxide detector, a combo right by our heads just to be safe with the fire and wood stove and then all the light switches and you know all your plugs tap to go lighting reading um and then we also have right here this is all barn wood um just reclaimed wood from barns that were salvaged around michigan uh we've got this hook system right here so there's one here and then they go back there and we actually put up you could probably get a shot of that uh, in a minute, but we've got uh, these uh, hammocks we put up, two hammocks. So we actually oh, cool. can sleep. We've slept eight people and our dog in here, which is pretty gnarly. Eight people? Eight people, yeah. Um, <laughs> gnarly. Well, I mean, I would say like, you know, two adults down there, two adults up here, but we had like kids, you know, so, yeah. you know, kids sleep in the hammocks. Um, what else? Yeah, we so we did the three inch insulation spray foam closed cell and then we did the wool batting from new zealand and that's kind of just you know it, it doesn't uh, ignite it's uh it wicks moisture so it's kind of like one of those must have things if you're in a small space you get condensation or you know, you're worried about electrical fires and that kind of stuff Got pantry storage up here that's you could see the spray foam you probably even see the wool maybe so there's the wool right there <laughs> oh, yeah in terms of driving this thing pretty straightforward there's a lot of control yeah here. uh yeah we got i kind of hardwired in some stuff so this is lighting for up here when I, we're stopping at a gas station um just your you know windshield wipers um a lot of this stuff doesn't really mean anything we got fans and stuff like that up here but it's basically just like a car you know you've got your reverse drive first, second, third, and then you've got your e-brake, and instead of putting it in park, you put it in neutral, and you just put the e-brake on. Um, pretty straightforward. Just, uh, you know, it's pretty much pedal to metal with this thing. And um, backup camera, uh, we put in a stereo system. You know, you got your, like in a plane, jump seat, it folds down. Oh, wow. Yeah, so that folds down, and then we've got we're trying to figure out spaces to put it, but I got just kind of shoved our backpacks in there. Yeah, so this is, uh, you know, your uh, shotgun seat. So I wanted, awesome. uh, you know, be able to have someone sit up with me, you know, when I'm driving across country. So yeah. just fabricated that bad boy in. How long have you guys been living in this then? I've been in this for eight months now. Um, you know, I moved in, it wasn't quite done. <laughs> we didn't have the cupboards made. Um, we didn't have our uh, bathroom and our, um, all of our storage and our, we just basically had a bed and a refrigerator in here. 
and I moved in. I just started whacking it away, just building it, and uh, a lot of fabrication to get it to what I wanted. You know, I just I took a long time because you know I wanted to make sure I did it right and did it to my liking. You know, satisfied with what I you know accomplished. Now that it's all done, is there anything you regret? Like, what would you do differently? Uh, uh yeah, I would. <laughs> You know, I had different intentions coming into building this. Um, like I wanted just something like a home. I just wanted a space I could live in and take up to the mountains and ski instruct. Now I, I really do want to just travel and um, kind of get more involved with recreating this, you know, get more involved with uh, doing conversions or maybe, you know, house projects. So. I think I would downsize to a van or even like a micro van, Sprinter, micro van, Japanese van. Um, just too much home for me. Like, you know, this is perfect for, you know, a family or uh, a couple that, you know, are just starting a family. Um, yeah, just too much space for me. I just, I want to downsize. Yeah, and so if you don't mind us asking, what do you think you have into this? Oof. That's a tough one. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's a little tough one. Uh, if someone wanted to build up a school bus themselves. Well, this is just such a different, I just, with everything that we've got invested in this. Not including labor, obviously. Um, Time is priceless. 60 grand. That's a pretty reasonable. 60. <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't say, like most people go into building these buses out thinking they're just gonna spend 20, 30. And how many hours do you think you have? Oh gosh, uh, 500 plus. That's insane. Yeah. <laughs> if people wanna follow your guys' adventures along, where can they find you guys? Um, you can find us at either Kyle Extreme or Bummy with Big Betty. All right, we'll put all that stuff right here and in the description too. Sweet. Thanks so much for showing us your van, dude. Yeah, man.